If you haven't done so yet, make sure you pause the video and attempt to solve the question on your own first before listening on. In this question, we are given a position function and we are asked when the particle is slowing down for this particular interval of time. And what we're going to have to do first is take our position function and transform it into a velocity function. And then after that, transform it into an acceleration function. And we'll explain why we do that in just a moment. First, let's write down the position function. And then to change this position function into a velocity function, we calculate its derivative. And the derivative here is relatively straightforward. There are simple power rules. So we can pull this exponent down and then subtract 1 to make 3t squared. Same idea here. We'll have to multiply by 12. So we're going to have 24t to the first power. This is already t to the first, so we bring that down. That becomes 36t to the 0. But t to the 0 is 1, of course, so we can actually remove that. So here is our velocity function. We also need an acceleration function, so we're going to calculate the second derivative. Again, simple power rules. So we'll have 6t minus 24, and then the derivative of this constant is 0. And the reason we want to come up with both a velocity and acceleration function is because when a question states that a particle is slowing down, that means that the velocity and acceleration are pointing in opposite directions. So for example, if we had a particle and its velocity was pointing to the right, then in order to slow down this particle, we would want the acceleration to point in the opposite direction to the left, or vice versa. If our particle was initially moving to the left, and therefore its velocity would be pointing in that direction, then we would want the acceleration to point to the right, again, in order to slow down the particle. So the basic idea is that we want the acceleration and the velocity to have opposite signs. And to figure out the intervals on which V and A have opposite signs, we have to do a sort of number line analysis. So what we'll do is start with the velocity function. And the first thing we're going to do is figure out where the velocity is equal to zero, which means for a moment the particle would be stopped. So we'll set the velocity equation equal to zero. We can actually factor out a three so that we have t squared minus 8t plus 12. And then fortunately this factors. So we're going to have t minus 6 as well as t minus 2 is equal to zero. And then we can set each factor equal to zero. And when we do that, we're going to see that there are two times when the particle is stopped at time equals 6 as well as time equals 2. Let's go ahead and plot those on a number line. And so here is our number line. And notice that we put a left endpoint of t equals 0 because the interval wants us to begin at 0. We can't go backwards into negative time. And now what we'll do is take a value between 0 and 2. And we're going to figure out if the velocity is positive or negative between those two values of time. So why don't we pick 1, since that lies right between 0 and 2, and we'll plug it into the factored form of the velocity. Now when we plug in 1 into the first factor, we would have a negative result since 1 minus 2 is negative 1. And then when we plug into the second factor, we also get a negative result. When you multiply negative by a negative, of course, you overall end up with a positive. So that actually means that the velocity is positive between 0 and 2 seconds. Let's go between 2 and 6 and pick a value. Maybe we could pick 4. And if we plug 4 into the first factor, 4 minus 2 is a positive result. 4 minus 6 is a negative result. And a positive times a negative is a negative overall. So this means the velocity is negative between 2 and 6 seconds. Finally, we come over here to maybe 7 seconds, since that lies to the right of 6. And we plug that in. And when we do that, we're going to get a positive times a positive, which of course is overall positive. So now we know when the velocity is positive as well as negative. What we need to do next is a similar calculation, but this time for the acceleration. So let's first set the acceleration equal to 0. We'll add the 24 over to the right-hand side. And then we can see that t is equal to 4. And that means at a time of 4, the acceleration would be 0. So let's come over to our number line here. And we'll plot t equals 4. And we want to figure out to the left of 4 as well as to the right of 4 whether the acceleration is positive or negative. So let's pick a value of maybe 3 seconds. And if we plugged 3 into the acceleration, we would have 6 times 3 minus 24. And that's going to end up being a negative answer. And so that means that from 0 all the way up to 4 seconds, we have a negative acceleration. And then if we choose a time past 4 seconds, maybe 5, 
and plug it in, we would have 6 times 5 minus 24, which ends up being a positive result. And so the acceleration is positive for all times past 4 seconds. Now, remember, we're looking for the situation in the times when the velocity and the acceleration have opposite signs. So let's maybe pause the video and study this number line for just a moment. And perhaps to get a clearer picture of these intervals, what we can do is carve them up. So we're going to draw a line at t equals 0, at t equals 2, at t equals 4, and then at t equals 6. And we're going to carefully keep track of the signs of the velocity and the acceleration. Now remember, from 0 to 2, the velocity was positive. From 2 all the way to 6, the velocity was negative. And then after a time of 6 seconds, the velocity switched back to being positive. For the acceleration from t equals 0 to t equals 4, it was negative in value. And then beyond 4 seconds, the acceleration was positive. Now remember, in order for the particle to slow down, we want v and a to have opposite signs. So all we have to do is look for that situation. Now here's a situation where they have opposite signs, as well as right here. And so we can see that the interval from 0 to 2 seconds gives the velocity and acceleration opposite signs, and the interval from 4 to 6 seconds also gives the velocity and acceleration opposite signs. So these are the two time intervals during which the particle is slowing down.